Avast! Arr! We're back. I. I seem to have developed a uh, Barbosa style accent. I don't know if it's Barbosa or if you're just a bit husky. <laughs> I, I don't know. Anyway. Um, so yeah, we're back and uh, we've got a cool interview with the lead content manager for Assassin's Creed. What's his name? Black Flag. His name is Karsten Meyer. You remembered it this time. I did. I'm <laughs> off the rum now. I'm sober. I know what I'm talking about. Don't drink and present, kids. So here's the interview. We hope you enjoy it. Arr. Arr. Very, very excited about the new game. Loved the whole series. Um, this is the first game that's going to be on the next-gen consoles. Mm -hmm. Was that a big thing to consider when you were actually planning the game? It's on PS4 and yep. it's also on PS3 as well. We were here at Sony, so we'll talk about them, but it's on, on the other consoles as well. So because it's on both, that's a challenge, of course, to, to make sure that we utilize the strength of the PS4, but still have a game that will run and still be a full uh, fulfilling experience on, on the current gen consoles as well. So that was the, that was the biggest challenge, to make sure that uh, we, we made the best of both consoles. Absolutely. I talked with a few different devs last year about Assassin's Creed 3, and they were telling me about um, the individual projects that different people worked on yep. was that something that you guys carried over to this one yeah well we got it's Montreal is essentially the mothership that's mm. the main studio yeah, but we have studios in Singapore and see all over basically um, there's about five or six uh, studios in the world uh, working on it and we do have to we want to give ownership of certain areas yeah. to, to different studios so a lot of the ocean um, activities that you take part in, like the harpooning, for example, just one, uh, the underwater, mm. that's handled by Singapore. City-based gameplay, largely in, in Montreal, but we've given yeah. some of the cities to different studios like Kiev and yeah. uh, our studio in, um, in Sofia as well. So, uh, yeah, there's a few, you know, we, we, we like to, as I say, give ownership of certain areas to different cities, and that gets the best result. They can start, it, start a, a mission, for example, from beginning to end, and, uh, and then we put it all together. To so very quickly go back, because this is something that I'm really interested in, uh, the harpooning and the deep sea diving mm -hmm. um, are two things that obviously we didn't have in the previous game, and sound and look from what I've seen fantastic mm -hmm. for the new next gen. Um, people are a little bit sort of um, intrigued as to how the uh, deep sea diving is going to work. I mean, is it going to be a reward system? You know, how? One of the primary things that you're going to be doing when you're uh, going underwater, it's not the case every single time, but uh, the main thing is searching hidden or sunken shipwrecks. So there's, as you would imagine in a shipwreck, uh, treasure to be, to be found down there. As I say, it's not the case every single time, but uh, for, for the majority of them, that's, that's what you're going down there for. So you're using an 18th century device called a diving bell. It's a real, mm. real uh, device from that time. Uh, essentially, a bell like Big Ben dropped yeah. into the water, uh, holds the air, and you're able to go out and uh, search chests and ship shipwrecks and avoid sharks and the other dangers of the deep. But of course, your air runs out, you have to get back, get some air, and it, you know, it works that way. That sounds really cool. Yeah. Um, I've always enjoyed sort of under, underwater stuff in things like Tomb Raider, um, in the early Tomb Raiders, obviously. So um, deep sea diving was a big sort of draw for me. And yeah, there are sharks, um, and I'm guessing there maybe you may be able to fight them. Yeah, well, you, as you would imagine, the, the, the primary thing is to try and avoid well, contact yeah. <laughs> to contact with them. So there's definitely a stealth element. Yeah. As there is, uh, you know, we've worked on stealth on land, but also um, brought that into the underwater gameplay as well. Okay. So you want to, like, stay in the coral, stay in the seaweed, and try and avoid being identified by, the, by these sharks. There's jellyfish, there's conga eels, there's all sorts of dangers down there. So you've got to be, uh, got to be stealthy, and you can also, much like you can in the city, you can interact with the environment. You can push off rocks and things to get um, little boosts to uh, escape uh, certain dangers and move around a bit more quickly down there. So we try to get that sort of free running yeah. element underwater as well. That's great because that's something that in quite a few games is always, there's always underwater but it's not fully realized almost. Mm. So I'm really excited to see that. Now obviously we have got a lot of history because Assassin's Creed is always based on history and you guys have done an incredible amount of research every time into, you know, historically recreating things. In terms of pirates, because obviously they weren't landlocked mm -hmm. and obviously there's quite a lot of written stuff about them, but how easy was it to tie that into the game? Yeah, researching pirates was 
was a lot of fun. As you say, there's not a lot written about them. So in previous Assassin's Creed games, we've worked with politicians, statesmen, and mm, you know, these key yeah. figures where they're very, their lives are very well documented. Uh, with the exception perhaps of Blackbeard, a lot of these pirates um, are, not, are not documented to that degree. Yeah. And there's a lot of legend and mythos around it. So that's great for us because we take yeah. the facts that we have and then we build around that. Yeah. There's a lot of creative license, so we're able to blow these characters out, really uh, make them really big personalities. So it's a very sort of different attitude in the game from previous AC games, uh, where we can be a little bit more irreverent and a bit more uh, piratey in terms of uh, the tone of the tone of the dialogue and the tone of the missions and the things well, that you, you do. like piracy. Well, exactly. Like piracy. Yeah, piracy is good, isn't it? So, yeah. Uh, other than Blackbeard, obviously, I understand you can't spoil things, mm -hmm. but what other pirates can we possibly look forward to meeting? Yeah, well, yeah, we can talk about some of the pirates. Um, so Blackbeard is the most is the most famous one. He was a guy that uh, you know has this fearsome reputation, but he understood the concept of, I guess, branding or certainly the idea of. Uh, giving the impression of extreme violence more than violence itself. So he would have this huge beard, he would put these fuses in his hair and appear like this, this apparition on, on the deck of his ship and, and the ships that he would encounter would just surrender straight away and he would never often need to actually have a fight. There were other pirates, however, that enjoyed the fight, who enjoyed the cruelty and the main guy who did that was uh, Charles Vane. And he's one to look out for because he's a nutcase. You know, he's a cruel, evil, sadistic uh, pirate and a lot of fun to hang out with. I'm sensing a theme here with Charles's, possibly, <laughs> and some evilness. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's uh, again, um, well, yeah, he's probably the most sort of psychotic character okay. um, uh, that you'll that you'll oh. meet in the in oh, the in the brand so far. Um, but you know, Edward's a pirate as well. He yep. has pirate objectives as well as his assassin ones, and he soon realises, even though that uh, Charles Vane is a bit of a nutcase, there's actually an opportunity to make a good pirating partnership with him. So you, even though you might not necessarily get agree with his uh, his methods. There are certain times where you have to, you know, work together. Yeah. Now, obviously, in the last few games, we've had John Delancey doing the voice of Desmond's dad, mm -hmm. and um, I sort of put a question out on Twitter saying, like, "Have you got any questions?" Because I'm going, and um, so there were a lot of queries about whether we're going to see any other voice actors that we know. There are a couple of little surprises. A few characters coming back. Um, in the, particularly in the present day. I don't know okay. if I can say much more than that, but uh, there'll, be some, there'll be some familiar faces or voices uh, coming back. Uh, in the 18th century, part of the game, 95% of the experience, we've, uh, we did our casting here in London. Uh, we have Matt Ryan, um, a Welsh actor uh, who plays Edward, um, plays it with his own voice. Um, you know, it was a perfect fit because yep. uh, Edward is from Wales, from Swansea particularly, just like Matt. So uh, that worked out well. Um, Charles Vane is uh, voiced by Ralph Einson, who uh, many may know as Finchy from The Office, and also in uh, Game of Thrones as well, amongst many other oh, things. Yeah, yeah. Of so, so yeah, he's uh, he's perfect. Uh, for, for a psychotic nutcase. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, so we've got Ralph doing that. Um, we have uh, Mark Bonnard playing um, Blackbeard, who does a fantastic turn uh, as that. He, we even used him in the announcement trailer. Yeah, yeah. that is Blackbeard, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Uh, that so was... that's the same voice, mm. you know, same actor. Uh, he even did the mocap himself for that. So and that's an interesting point. We're, it's not just voice acting that we're doing. We yeah, do full do, performance yeah. capture. So. When they're in the studio, they've got they've got those silly suits on mm. uh, with the ping pong balls and everything. But um, we're capturing their movements, their voice, and even their facial expressions all in one take. So it's essentially like theatre, you know. And they're being um, filmed from 80 odd cameras all around them, and um, you know they don't have to worry about camera positions and retakes. And you know they can, we can just do the scene. And it's been quite a liberating experience for them. A lot of them, uh, those actors who haven't done uh, full performance capture before, were surprised that. Uh, sort of how, what freedom it gives and, um, you know, to, to the role. Someone was asking about whether you could effectively commandeer a boat and steal it. Now, I think they were meaning in a sort of Grand Theft Auto style way, which I don't think you can do, but how is, uh, you know, accumulating pirates and the fleet going to work? 
So one of the cool things, uh, one of the big developments that we made from the naval in Assassin's Creed 3 is that uh, you can obviously sail around the world, take out your spyglass, see a ship, see what cargo it's got, go up, uh, attack it, reduce its uh, strength to, uh, to, some, to almost zero. Yeah. Once it's in the red zone, as it were, you can pull up alongside you. In fact, you can approach the ship from whatever angle you like. Um, and then launch yeah. the boarding uh, sequence. So you just hold a button down, your pirates, pirate crew will throw grappling hooks, pull the two ships together, and it's up to you how you want to get onto the other ship. So you can climb up through the rigging, go in like an assassin stealth, stealth style and drop in from above. You can jump into the water, swim around to the other side, taken by surprise, take a rope, swing right into the action. You know, it's up to you. Every boarding is different because all the ship, layout, ship layouts are different. Um, so there's a lot of variety in, in, in terms of uh, hijacking a ship or um, attacking, boarding a ship. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that kind of commandeering a boat, you kind of do it to, to that sense. However, once you have the ship, you have some choices. You can take it apart to fix yeah. the jack door, your own ship. You can recruit some of their crew. Um, you obviously steal the cargo. And one of the cool things you can do is send it off into Kenway's fleet, which is a meta game that we have on, on, on the console, yeah. but also on your companion app as well. So if you have a tablet, you can actually send all the ships that you capture off on missions around the world yeah. and to plunder on your behalf. So a little bit like um, Ezio's Assassins almost, where it, they popped around, but on a tablet instead. Yeah, exactly. And, you, and as I say, you can still do it in the game if you don't have a, a tablet. But the nice thing about uh, having it on the tablet is that you can do it away from away from your console and then, you know, at work or school or on the bus or whatever. If you don't have don't do it at school, kids. <laughs> <laughs> and then you come back and then you've got all this extra cargo waiting for you as you, and you get back to your living room. It's pretty cool. Oh, I, I can see that I can see that being wonderful and very addicting at the yeah. same time it's really fun. It's really nice. I can I can imagine I, it's it's really exciting that you guys because obviously um, you've got the division coming out next year mm -hmm. as well and the tablet is in that as well so it's great to see more integration with that yeah. well it looks absolutely fantastic I've probably played about an hour today and I've been sort of keeping an eye on it uh, across a few various conventions I'm very excited to see it later on in the year so thank you very much for your time and best of luck with the launch